Incredible afternoon, everyone. Incredible afternoon. How are you guys doing? I am Shakia, the professor of HS Inc. 365, which is the parent company for our other entities, Silaholics Anonymous, who is where I have been teaching you guys for all the past, what, seven, almost eight years, how to use Silhouette Studio, which is the program that is used to control the uh, Silhouette family of machines. However, you can use it as a standalone graphic designing software. Uh, we are also the home of the Honestly Speaking product line that carries the Change Again Submission Paper, Submission Ink, Pigment Ink, Chip Resetters, um, Heat Tape, um, and so much more to help you on your creative journey. And then we have 365 Creative Academy, which is my academy where I teach a wide variety of things from Silhouettes, like uh, Silhouette Studio, using the machines. We have business courses all on our website um, Learn at wait, learn.365creativeacademy.com. In today's video, I am going to share with you guys how to use the fade mask. I have shown this in several, 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 several videos on different ways that you can use these masks, but I decided to do a video that just kind of focuses on it and it wasn't a part of like a major design or anything like that. We're just going to just show different ways that it can be used. This is something um, that is uh, essential to have when working with Silhouette Studio if you want to create things like drop shadows. There you can do vector shadows in Silhouette Studio, but you cannot do drop shadows you won't be able to like mask or fade off the bottom of, of images. So there's a way to mask it off with like uh, sharp edges so that it will look like it is, um, like it, it looks like it's faded off. So that's another benefit of it. It's a great way to create custom gradients as well. It's a way to hide things so that you can see words better. I'm gonna show you a few ways um, in which I have used the mask. The key thing with using the fade bars or fade mask, whichever way you, you decide to kind of refer to them, is your crop. Like that's your key function, is going to be crop. And where that is positioned and being able to like access it, to be able to crop it down and things like that. So I'm gonna break all of that down for you in this video. If this is something that you are interested in, do stick around. Um, be sure to hit the like button. Be sure to share this video out. If you're watching it live or the playback on it, if you know someone can benefit from this, be sure to also tag them in this video if you're watching it over on Facebook. All right. So I'm going to head on over to Silhouette Studio. All right, so I can show you the various ways it can be used. All right, so I still, we do have excuse me, quite a few people who are watching us right now. Hello, Chris from Down Under. Hey, Jesse. Hey, Tony Ace. And hello, Miss Cheryl. <coughs> excuse me. All right. Um, I just realized all of these are really like the white and black ones. I think, well, this one has color to it. But for the most part, I've used like the white and black to um, fade stuff off. So this is a background that I created for a memorial. Oh, I'm sorry. Before I get into this, hello, Becky. Hello, Adrian. How are you guys doing? Before I get into this, the actual bars. So when you purchase the file from our website, you're actually going to get a PNG version of each one of these colors. If you were using the older versions of Silhouette Studio, so 4.3 or uh, later, you can just open up that particular color in your file. So you'll just either go file open and then copy and paste, or you can merge it in. If you are using the newer version of Silhouette Studio 4.4, and it has the PNG, um, automatic PNG trace, you have to open up the Silhouette file. So I have thought about all of these things. And I have in that download that you get, there is a silhouette version. When you open it up, it looks like this. This is how you have to open the file to be able to use them because I um, set them up in an older version. 
So when you open up that file, it's going to give you like the actual fades. It's not going to be where it is cut off um, and you have, it just looks like a big solid blob. So if you're using the older version, even if you turn off the PNG um, trace, just open up the silhouette version. You will choose the color that you want, copy and paste it over into the other, um, like your actual design one. So let's just say for here, I'm going to just take the teal. We're going to copy that, bring that over here and paste. Okay. I'm going to put this off to the side for now. I'm also going to come back over here. Let's just grab this red one, copy and paste. All right. So that's how you would bring it into your design. And we're going to, so I already have this set up. It was um, basically a template for a button for a memorial. I'm going to take Whitney's picture and place it here. So she has a very sharp cutoff. Now I could easily make this to where I have her go off the edge and you won't see it. So we're going to go like that. And let's see. I gotta grab. Okay, there it is. All right, so I'm gonna copy it and paste in front. I use my keyboard shortcuts, but you can right click and copy and paste in front if you would like. And I'm gonna select both items, the circle and Whitney, and I'm going to crop. So I can have her kind of go to the bottom so it doesn't like a sharp cutoff. Or um, I can use the fade bars. Now here are some clouds. I mean, I can even make it to where these clouds are technically to the front. So we're gonna bring those to the front. We're gonna put her back there, right? So she's in the front. Um, I mean, the clouds are in front of her, but because the clouds are transparent, you can still really, really see through that and it looks like a sharp cutoff. So what I'm going to do is bring this fade over here and I want the darkest part to be like where, right where that harsh line is. So I'm going to bring that up, keep bringing until I can't really see the bottom of her. And I actually want to bring her and, uh oh, come on. What the world is going on here? Why is it not selecting multiple pieces? All righty. Silhouette Studio is acting crazy. All right. Exit. Face in front. All right, I have, okay, there we go. Bring to the front. All right, because I don't really want the cloud part in front. I want those to be more to the background, but I want her to look like she's fading off. So there's that. We're gonna bring this up right until the dark part, um, the darker part of it, because all of this is still transparent and it's a fade, but you can see it because it's light. So in the middle part, it gets really dark. Bring that up until you can't see it. And... Why are you moving around like crazy? I'm going to, there's a little bit of pink here. Now I can leave that pink there and not bring it all the way down. That's up to you. But here's this. I'm going to click on here. This is my circle and I'm going to copy it. So I like to use keyboard shortcuts, control C, copy, control F, command F to paste in front, hold down shift, click on the fade and crop. So now it's filled in that area. Now it does fill in everything. So you do lose some of the detail of the clouds. There is no way around that. You cannot just go and isolate it to just her right here. It's not going to work. If you end up cropping it down to her body, you're just going to get a really, really harsh line. So SDO is not Photoshop. So you can't make it do something that it's not intended to do. So. Like I said, we can bring this fade in. I will lose, you know, some of the detail, like I said, of the cloud, but we can see it up through here. Because it's a PNG, it does have a really large box. Uh, with darker colors, you won't be able to do this, but when it's lighter colors, you can double click, select, uh oh, oh, wait, why is that back there? So double click, hold down shift, select all of these edit points. And I'm just going to bring, come on, you're bugging. 
How does the whole thing not move? I don't know. Silhouette Studio is acting crazy right now. All right, so I'm just going to bring those edit points down. I'm going to delete that one. And I'm going to have to recrop this. So I'm just bring that down like that. Click on, okay, actually, con Control F, paste in front. Hold down Shift, click and crop. So now the box isn't so big and I can select the cloud if I want it to move that up some. I can select that cloud and move it because I changed where the box was. And I can go in here and adjust this as well. All right. So that's one of the ways that you can use it just to cover up or fade off the bottom. I mean, I could also have this like choose like a pink color and have that match as well. So let's say I go back over here. I'm going to grab this pink. I'm going to go copy, bring this over here and paste. I'm going to change my background color to this color. Um, and we're going to pull this here, which does affect my clouds up there. Um, all right, I'm going to now, yeah, I really shouldn't go through all of this, but I'll just delete point. Oh, now see, now I have to do too, too much. Okay. I'm not gonna worry about that. I just changed the color. I'm going to just focus on the fades. Y'all know I get to wanting to teach all the time and like fix stuff, but sometimes I just need to just show so the video isn't too long. If you want to really get into my teachings and see how I design and why I make the decisions that I make, that's when you join my courses. All right. So we're going to put that right there, right? I'm going to control F. Well, actually I can't because I brought in some other stuff. So let's click on the circle, control C, control F, hold down shift, click on the fade and crop it. Now you may think that, oh, that's a lot of work to have to do all of that, but Silhouette Studio is not, again, it's not Photoshop. It's not meant to, um, it, it's not meant for you to be able to do those things. There's workarounds. These are simply workarounds. So they do take a little bit more skill, a little bit more time. I'm going to actually flip this one, um, sorry, vertically. I'm going to place it here. I'm going to send that to the back. And I'm going to drag here and send all of this to the back. That way, all right, hold on. We're going to bring our fade to the front. So what I did there, remember where I had like, it was a little too like pinkish um, in this area. So what I did was I used my fade and I put that behind it, but in front. So there's like the way that the layers and stuff are set up. So it's set up behind this top layer, but in front of the pink and put that white there. Is that the fade? Hold on. Oh, come on. That's the one thing with Silhouette is trying, like when you have bigger boxes, but I talk about that in my 30 day training about how to get rid of that. All right, so I'm going to pull this out and down. All right, perfect. Right there, pop it again and Send it to the back, bring this part to the front. Okay, there we go. So now it looks white up there instead of like the pink color. And I don't know how I move these darn clouds, but you kind of get the idea of that one. All right, so let's move on though, because I can be here forever and a day teaching you how to do that. So this design, I actually had the drop shadow here. So you can see it without it. And because you can't do drop shadows where it's faded, you can do vector shadows, but not drop shadows. So there it is without it, it just looks kind of flat. Well, when you add a fade to the bottom, you're able to create shadowing. So now it looks like that bar part is pushed to the front. 
it doesn't look flat. It's a shadow behind it. So we're going to move that over there. And now I'm going to just show it to you with the red one. All right. So maybe I wanted to have a red looking shadow instead of a black. So I'm going to stretch that across just like that. Okay. Um, I don't need it to go all the way across. So I'm going to put a box and come to about here. I can see where that bar is. I just want to kind of cut it off right there. Hold down shift, click, and we're going to subtract that, right? So I just cut that part off. So now it's shorter. Now I'm going to click on my outline. I'm going to duplicate that in the front. So that's that piece. I'm going to change the color. Okay. So you still see there's red there. I changed the color. You don't have to. I just did it so that you can see what I selected. All right. Um, I'm going to remove the color from it. It is still there. I just hit remove the color. Removing the color is something that you will need to do. Hold down shift, click on the red, and this time we're going to crop. So it's going to crop it down into the shape of that outline. I'm going to hold down shift, drag and select everything that should be to the back, send it to the back. So now it's right up under here. If I wanted it to be a little bit shorter, I can bring that like that. But of course, I will have to recrop it because it is hanging off just a little bit here. So I would need to crop it again. And then we're going to send all of this to the back. And now we have um, a red shadow. And if I wanted to really put that up there, I can do that as that also. I'm going to just mirror that to the top, bring that up some, and then send that to the back. Boom. So now I have that piece that's really illuminated and it's highlighted with those fades. So that's another way that it can be done. Um, the other one would be like, again, to mask off certain areas. So when I made these bookmarks, like I said, I've shown in several videos how to use the mask in different ways, but it's all different videos. I've shown them in various designs. This is the first time I think I've done it where it's just showing just the fades, all right? So right here, oh, let's ungroup. I created word art and all of the words like everywhere. So if I wanted to put our um, taglines up on it, it will get lost. So I need to cover that. I didn't want it to be a solid line. So that's where the fade bar comes into play, where you would put, I put that right there and then cropped it down. So I'll use the white one again. And we're going to this off to the side. Come in here, grab the white, copy, and paste. I'm going to extend this down because I want the solid part, but then I want, you know, the faded. I'm going to click on my outline. We're going to copy and paste in front. I'm going to remove the color. Hold down shift, click on the fade and crop. Oh, wait, did I, okay, there we go. Um, oh, there were some other pieces there. That was a, uh, what was this thing called? This was a SVG and not a JPEG. So I'm going to select here, hold down shift, click on my fade and send that. Oh, come on. Send that to the back. And now when it comes to looking at this, you're able to see it, but this part you can still see it just fades off. So that's another way that you may end up using it. Um, on this particular bookmark, it's three different fades. It's, my, it's the cyan, magenta, and yellow one so that it creates a better fade here. Um, if you go back to... Um, 
Syllaholics Anonymous Awareness Month, when I made the bookmarks, I forget, forget which day it was. I really broke this down and I showed the difference if you make your own custom gradient, how the colors mix. But this is made up of three different fade bars. Oh, come on. How many times I got to ungroup it? Okay. So there's one here, there's one in the middle, and there's one on the end. So you end up just copying your background and cropping it down several times. So I'm going to intentionally make this one wider. Actually, I'm going to make all of them wider, just so that you can see me crop it down. You, of course, again, would resize it. You're going to see, of course, the top at like the other side of the fade, but you're just going to extend it to where you get it where you want. I'm going to send this to the back. Give me one moment. I'm going to move this so that you can see just this by itself. All right. Okay. So I'm going to take this one here and we're going to copy it because we're going to have to do several uh, paste of this. So I'm going to copy my first one. Oh, wait, I had to copy it again because I moved it. So I'm going to copy. I'm going to right click and paste in front. I'm going to... Remove the color. Actually, it's better if you remove the color and then copy it. Control C, copy. That way you don't have to remove the color every time. Hold down shift, click on this one. It's behind it, but it doesn't even matter. It's going to bring it to the front. Modify and crop. Okay. I'm going to place the yellow one where I want that to fall at. Control F, Command F, paste in front. Hold down shift, select the yellow and crop. Bring down the blue one, paste in front, hold down shift, click on there and crop. So I created my own custom gradient. That's another way it can be used. Uh, right now we're in the midst of graduation season. So on a stole, if you wanted something to be faded off. So I'm gonna just remove all of this and place this one let's change this to uh let's see let's just go with orange i think turner tech is kind of like those type colors um my glitter i'm gonna go over here to my image effects and we're gonna change the hue on that one and i'll probably sample one of the colors like one of the orange tones from here. Ooh, not brown. I want one of more like an orangey tone. All right, so maybe it's co coming up more brown. So let's go back over here and play around with our hue a little bit more. All right. I want more of orange type tones. Let's see. Hmm. All right, there's a way that I can go in here, but I'm not trying to really go through, go through silhouette um, and show you guys because I can change the gamma, I can change contrast and all of that. I'm just going, ooh, wrong one. All right, that works for me. I'm just gonna leave it at that color. And now I'm going to pull this here. You end up having to do more than one because if you end up stretching it too much, you're going to really extend where that fade is and it's going to take up too much space. So you're gonna to have to do it in layers. We're going to bring this down so that it doesn't take up so much of it, okay? I'm gonna take my template, which in this case is my stole outline and no color, Control C, copy, hold down shift, click on the fade and crop. And then I'm going to take another one. And this one, I can extend it because I really only want the darker color of it. So I'm going to make that really big. Bring this down. I'm going to stretch this out, stretch it out, stretch it out to where it's basically a solid looking color. Right click, paste in front because I already copied it. Hold down shift, click on the fade and crop. 
All right. And now I'm going to send that to the back, hold down shift, click on this front one and group those together. Now they are one. I'm going to then send them to the back. Click on my glitter, send that to the back. And now this is on the front. I can get rid of that red piece. I don't need this. All right. And then, of course, I will be able to go in and change all of the other colors. Let's just make this the red for the sake of this looking like it's cohesive. So we're just going to make that red. And that's another way. So I'm using it to create just different faded areas within my design. I cannot teach you all the different ways as you are utilizing the program, as you are building your designs and you're thinking about what it is that you want to do, you're going to find and always discover new ways of using the uh, fades. I'm only showing you a little snapshot of the fades and how um, they can work. And last but not least, like on this one, um, it was too busy back here. Uh, this was sublimated. When it comes to sublimation, if it's white, white does not print. If you find that for some reason, your, even though you have white, it's printing out color, go over to your image effects, go over to um, contrast, brightness, brightness and saturation. Take your brightness all the way up, take your contrast all the way up and take your saturation all the way down. It will make it appear white and it won't show up when you go to print. But that's only if you find like you're having issues with it printing like a pure white, okay? Um, so I'll put that there. See how busy it is. We're going to just bring this to right here. It covers up the bottom to where her name and just did it stands out more. All right. So that's another way that it can be used um, in the designs. So she says those fades can definitely take your design to another level. Yes, they can. All right. So hopefully this helps for those who sent us messages and say, well, how do I use these things? You know, you want to give us a bad review because you're not familiar with how to utilize the program. This is how you use it. And again, remember, if you have version 4.4, that is not something that I did wrong. Silhouette Studio has the PNG trace. So these will come in kind of cuckoo crazy. So I went in and put all of them all on one page on a silhouette file that I say from an older version. And all you have to do is open this up. I can't control that part of the program in the fact that when you open up the individual colors, they can look more like just solid blobs. I can only, um, you know, give you a workaround or provision for that. All right. Um, you get them, everything that I always talk about, you're always going to find them on my website, um, shop.hsinc365.com. Everything that I discuss, if it's ours, HS Inc. Digital is the, you know, our um, department for digital files and things like that, but it's all found on our website, shop.hsinc365.com. That's also where you will find our full training on how to use Silhouette Studio to learn all the tools, learn and understand why you have to send to the back, bring to the front, why we have to group this part together so that it shows this. Why did I have to send part of it to the back to select the front one and then group it? Like all of that is broken down in my Learn, learn Silhouette Studio in 30 Days training. There's also um, a sale going on right now. If you're new to my classes um, and you want to just really get... Um, a good bundle and be able to really get into some creating some designs while you're going through the 30 days. Right now, there is a promotion going on. If you get Essential to Silhouette Studio, um, just automatically add it to your cart. Any two of these, so the Memorial class or the Switch Up or um, Compliment Your Small Business. If you click on that, it shows you all of the different um, sessions that was taught. It was nine different sessions. But if you add any two of these, you're going to get 30% off as long as you have Essentials to Silhouette Studio. It's an automatic cart discount. So you just add it on there and it will take it off. If you put all three, it's not going to give you the discount for small business. So it's a promotion where it's only for two 
out of the three. So you choose which two you want to take advantage of on this particular discount. All right. Um, but hopefully this video helped you guys understand fade bars, just like how to use our fade bars just a little bit more. And it also helps you understand Celeste Studio a little bit more in cropping and subtracting, sending things to the front and back. Seeing them within designs is definitely going to help uh, bridge that gap between what you learn in the 30-day training and, um, and creating your own designs, all right? Uh, I do believe I put it in the description of this video. Yeah, so the fades are there. And once you're on the site, just click to the home and then you'll find the 30-day training. All right, guys, until next time, have a great one. Continue to unlock your creativity and be incredible. Peace.